<laughs> All right. Um, so we're going to lay up a plate of carbon fiber for the fins. Um, I originally had planned on using three millimeter Amazon plate, um, but the piece I bought was too small once I properly sized my fins. So rather than order another sheet, I figure we might as well just make one because I've got plenty of carbon fiber left over. So we're going to do an 11 layer layout. We're going to try to make a quasi isotropic. So we've got five layers five layers of uh, plus or minus 45 degree bias, like it's cut 45 degrees. And then I've got six layers of like zero and 90 degree um, fabric. So basically we'll do a layer of this, a layer of that, and keep alternating back and forth until we end up with one last layer of this. Um, and then we're gonna try to vacuum bag it with uh, an Amazon storage bag. So we'll see how that goes. So I've already weighed my cloth. I got 200 grams of cloth. Um, so I ended up mixing 220 grams of epoxy, figuring that's like a 10% uh, contingency. Um, we're gonna lay up on this sheet of glass that I had laying around. And the first layer we're gonna put down as a release from the glass is this mylar. This is just aluminized mylar from Amazon again. So super budget layup all around. It's gonna be just fine. So I like to start by painting a layer of epoxy right on the mylar. Um, this is all carbon fiber fabric from solar composites. It's their 3K stuff, the, the cheapest 3K stuff they sell, basically. So this first layer is a little big, but that's fine. I'm just going to layer it like that. And then, you know, I've never tried just pouring resin on. Let's see how that goes. I want to be careful at the edges, uh, pushing down more than pulling out so I don't disturb the fabric too much. All right, feeling pretty good about that. So the next one's gonna be a 45 degree bias to that. Like I said, that first sheet was probably an inch wider than it needed to be. It's just how I cut them. Just by sticking it down in the middle, working my way out. All right, so I'm expecting to use about 25 grams a layer. Um, and I know the original weight of this thing was 260-ish grams. So I'm two layers in. I just want to make sure I'm around 200 grams right here. I'm at 197, so like that's the appropriate amount of resin to hit my target. Just a neat way to check. Um, I'm hoping each layer is about 11 thousandths of an inch thick. So when I'm, it's all said and done, this should be about an eighth of an inch. So let's see, I got about three layers left. I'm expecting 20 grams a layer, so 60 plus this tear it at 40, so it should be about 100 grams right there. Ooh, and there's 65, okay. So, a little lighter on the epoxy these next couple layers. All right, here's nine. Eddie. 
You want to show me a Lego? All right, I'm almost done, and then I'll come take a look. Tell me about your Lego. It's steadier than a gun. Really? It's steadier than any of your guns. Sounds like a crazy Lego. Can you show me what your bullets look like? Uh, another time, buddy. Because I'm busy right now. All right. Um, I pre-cut some peel ply. This is just that silicone coated stuff from solar. Put that right on top. All right, and what's comforting is this is wetting out really well. Oh yeah, so there's gonna be plenty of epoxy in there. Um, oh yeah. We're gonna do two layers of that just because I cut two layers. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. Seems like I actually have tons of epoxy oozing out of this, so. It'll help sweat that out anyways. So I'm trying to just paint this as flat as possible. Give me a nice mint matte finish. All right. And then for breather, I'm just trying blue shop towel. Like basically two pieces of this. Um, so any excess epoxy will hopefully get squeezed through the peel ply and into this. I'm gonna do another piece, maybe another two, just to make sure we can get to the vacuum portion. See what I mean in a second. The actual vacuum bag is just one of these it's like a storage bag for a quilt. <laughs> All right. So I wanted to make sure that the, uh, the towel at least made it to this port so it can help suck all the air out here. Um, yeah, I mean, this looks decently flat, we'll see. So the whole reason I wanted to try this is because like, even if this gets to like half an atmosphere of vacuum, that's seven pounds a square foot over a square foot is like a thousand pounds. So it'd be like me putting a thousand pounds of weight on this to help flatten it. Um, let's see. Oh, yo. You can actually see the, uh, yeah, it's working. Holy cow. It's like no joke tight. Oh, let's open this thing up. We got a cure overnight upstairs in the kitchen. So it peels off the plastic very easy. Honestly, we could reuse that bag. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to get under the peel ply here. Oh yeah. Uh, So this is the uh, shop towel. It's kind of a gummy, it's interesting. Peel ply worked great. 
So where I had the seam and the towel, there is one little ridge there I'm not the biggest fan of. Let's see. Peel ply came right off the glass. Or the mylar did. Just gonna be careful peeling the mylar off the carbon. Yeah. That is a nice looking piece of plate. This is what the other side looks like. I was exposed to the peel ply. You can see a bit of a ridge there. We'll have to see how we can sand that out. to uh, bevel the fins. I don't know if you can see that. But um, basically, what I've been doing is putting two strips of uh, inch and a half wide masking tape here, then aligning a uh, carpenter pencil off with the third strip, strapping that down, and then wet sanding for about four minutes a side till the bevel is about a quarter inch, five sixteenths long, and uh, that's what we're doing. Sanded with like 220, did an acetone wipe, 99% uh, IPA wipe, got my fin here. Um, I had to shim it just a little bit to fit in my template with some masking tape. You can see I've got some pretty trick 3D printed uh, fin templates I made. Just basically made sure they're spaced equal distant, 90 degrees to this flat tile and sitting on there. So that should give me pretty good alignment. Gonna just tack these in with some five minute epoxy. Um, so we're mixing that up and here we go. I really just need this on the thin root. All right. Here goes nothing. All right, so here's a close-up of what kind of happens with that jig there. Just a simple 3D print, keeping everything nice and aligned. All right, so I made a little sanding block. Uh, hit this with the 220. Now we're going to do an acetone wipe, and then we're going to clean up the acetone with 99% isopropyl alcohol, and then we're going to lay some fillets. This is Infinity Bonds EP420, uh, non-sag and black. Um, it's like 18 bucks for a kit of this, usually. Plus you gotta buy this little applicator, but it makes it so nice to use. And this little wand mixes it for you. So I know I need 25 grams in each one. I'm actually gonna weigh this real quick. It's about 290. So when I'm done, I'm gonna wanna make sure I'm at what, 265? And I'm gonna purge the first little drops that come out of this. Just to make sure we get good mixed up. The other thing I like to do is as I'm dispensing, try to keep the nozzle underneath a bead of epoxy so you're not like pushing air into it. I like to get the back established. 
and then I try one big move. Try that again. So one smooth move, back to front. And then I normally end up with a ton right there. Just paint that right in. I don't know if this helps or not, but I like to clean the tool off in between each fillet. So get that back fillet started. I'm going to do that again. You can wait a little bit, but I've had okay luck just peeling this right off the hop. And I mean, look at that, huh? I'll let it sit like that for a couple minutes and then I'll normally take it upstairs where it's a little warmer, set it like this for a little bit. And then uh, in like three to six hours, you can do the next one. All right, so we did some wet sanding with 220 grit. Kind of killed me when you have like a really nice finish like this and you're just scuffing it up, but we're gonna put a neat coat of epoxy on it and make everything super shiny again.